the, the moderator for this uh, roundtable this morning. And uh, so without further ado, I'm going to jump into things here and uh, get going. So if uh, Becky, I appreciate you continuing to let people into the, uh, from the waiting room as, as we move forward. Um, so we are here today to uh, celebrate the life legacy uh, and the Ignatian year, the life and legacy of William Berry. So I would like to tell you a, a little bit uh, about this great man as uh, we venture forward. Uh, and I'm trying to get my screen to move here. There we go. Father William Berry was a distinguished spiritual director, retreat director, author, teacher, psychologist, formation director, director of novices, rector, provincial, and of course, a Jesuit priest. Uh, he was ordained in 1962, called to eternal life just a few months ago, December of 2020. Mm -hmm. Father Barry somehow found the time in the midst of all those various hats that he wore to write more than 20 books, including a number of books that Loyola Press was privileged to publish. And you see on your screen, uh, his book, The Practice of Spiritual Direction, was one of the most significant contributions to the revival and the flourishing of Ignatian spirituality in the 20th century. And Father Barry had the rare ability to present complex spiritual issues in clear, well-written prose. And he was one of the most significant Ignatian commentators of the early 21st century. He left a legacy that will long influence spiritual directors and seekers, a legacy that we are going to celebrate and talk about today with our roundtable guests who I will be introducing in just a moment. But why today? Why May 20th? Well, today, in addition to being my hire date 19 years ago at Loyola Press, uh, there's a little more uh, important anniversary. It's the 500th anniversary of St. Ignatius Loyola's injury during the Battle of Pamploma, the shattering of his knee by a cannonball, which ultimately led to his conversion from soldier to saint. And the Society of Jesus has chosen this day, May 20th, 2021, to kick off an Ignatian year during which we will, in addition to okay. celebrating all things Ignatian, uh, we will mark the 400th anniversary of the canonization of St. Ignatius and St. Francis Xavier. And that will take place on March 12th, 2022. The year concludes on the Feast of St. Ignatius on July 31st of 2022. And so we at Loyola Press are proud to usher in this Ignatian year by celebrating the contributions and legacy of Jesuit Father William Berry with this roundtable discussion. And permit me to introduce our uh, roundtable guests. Uh, Becky Eldridge is an Ignatian trained spiritual director, retreat facilitator, speaker, and author of two books, The Inner Chapel and Busy Lives and Restless Souls, both from Loyola Press. She leads a ministry that offers spiritual direction, resources, and retreats, virtual and in person, rooted in the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. And you can find her at www.beckyeldridge.com. And she and her husband and three children live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Good morning, Becky. Morning, Joe. Glad to be here. Great to have you here. Gary Jansen is a popular speaker and author of several books, including The 15 Minute Prayer Solution, Station to Station, and Micro Shifts, all from Loyola Press. Jansen has appeared on numerous TV programs, and his writing has been featured in many periodicals and newspapers. <laughs> Gary uh, worked at Penguin Random House for 25 years, where he was the editor on several New York Times bestsellers. And he is now the Director of Trade and Acquisitions, uh, New Product Development at Loyola Press. And Gary and his family live in New York City. Welcome, Gary. Hey, guys. Thanks for the invite. All right. 
Father James Martin, Jesuit priest, is the editor at large of America Magazine and a prolific author, writer, speaker, and editor. He's a frequent commentator in the media about issues of religion and spirituality and is known for his robust social media presence. In 2017, Pope Francis appointed Father Martin as consultant to the Vatican Secretariat for Communications. He is the author of numerous books, including Between Heaven and Mirth, Building a Bridge, The Jesuit Guide to Almost Everything, My Life with the Saints, which is his best-selling Loyola Press book, and his most recent book, Learning to Pray. Father Martin also resides in New York City. Welcome, Father Jim. Thanks. Good to be with you all. Great. Happy Ignatian Father Mark here. Thibodeau, a Jesuit priest, has served as novice director, spiritual director, and high school campus minister for over 30 years. He is an acknowledged expert on the topic of prayer and discernment, and he has authored many popular books on prayer and spirituality, including God's Voice Within and Reimagining the Ignatian Examine, both from Loyola Press. He lives in New Orleans, Louisiana, where he serves as pastor of Holy Name of Jesus Church. Welcome, Father Mark. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Good to have you. And finally, Vanita Hampton Wright is managing editor of the Loyola Press Trade Books Department. She has written various fiction and nonfiction books, including the novel Dwelling Places. And for Loyola Press, Days of Deepening Friendship, the Art of Spiritual Writing, and most recently, Small Simple Ways, an Ignatian Daybook for Healthy Spiritual Living. And Vanita is a spiritual director and a retreat leader and a practitioner of Ignatian spirituality. And she writes regularly for IgnatianSpirituality.com. Vanita and her husband live in Springdale, Arkansas. Welcome, Vanita. Hi, good to be here. Thanks for asking me. All right, and we are going to begin our discussion with Vanita. She's going to be the kick off the uh, conversation with our roundtable. And the first question that I have for you, Vanita, and for the rest of the panel uh, is this. So what is your understanding of Ignatian spirituality and why is it relevant in today's world? Well, Ignatian spirituality meets the person where that person is you know it's very much about the life you're living right now not the life you think you should be living or not the idealized life but just just the nuts and bolts all the nitty-gritty stuff in your life right now and it helps you approach that in prayer with your imagination uh, ignatian spirituality honors the emotions as part of your prayer life and discernment uh, it honors your physical life uh, how you're feeling today, how that adds into everything that's going on. Uh, and and you're, you're, everything about your life is important and it's, it's all sacred because you're beloved of God and uh, you can trust that the Holy Spirit will work through the stuff of your life to help you become the person that God has created you to be. So I just think it's, it's, it's about who I really am. And I think that makes it very accessible and welcoming to just about anybody. Father Jim, you're muted. I agree with Vanita. It shows you why she's such a good and valued editor. Uh, she can get to the meat of things and the heart of things very quickly. Uh, each moment of our lives in Ignatian spirituality, um, it's wonderful to talk about this on the beginning of the Ignatian year, uh, is a moment to encounter God. Uh, and no matter what we're doing, uh, if we're encountering a friend or working or outside in nature, this is one of Bill Barry's uh, great gifts was to enable us to see how every moment is a chance for us to encounter God and for God to encounter us. And so um, Ignatian spirituality says that uh, the spiritual life is not just confined to what happens when you're sitting in church or you're at mass or a church service or reading the Bible. Um, it could be as simple as walking on a beach with a friend. And so this the notion of finding God in all things, which is often used as a shorthand, I think is also very accurate. So finding God in all things. And why is it relevant today? I think as more and more people uh, find themselves, um, you know, sometimes. Father Jimmy just muted again somehow. 
I'll ask my panelists to remain unmuted. Yeah, the that's right. says the host muted you. It must be must be divine intervention. <laughs> um, I'll just say me. that. Uh, yeah, I'll just say that. Um, uh, you know, it's relevant for today's world uh, because as more and more of us are, you know, finding ourselves apart from organized religion, not all of us, but some of us, uh, there is a, there's a desire for God um, and this desire for God, you know, for many people who don't feel connected to organized religion, you know, can be found in their daily life, right? And so that's, that's the foundation of spirituality is, is this encounter with God. So I think it's more relevant than ever. And I, just to add to that, I just think, um, you know, Ignatian spirituality is a spirituality for everybody. It's, it's, for, it's for scholars, it's for lay people, it's for priests, it's for, it literally is something that crosses, I feel like crosses denominations. I've met, I've met folks over the years, whether they're Jewish, Islamic, Catholic, or even evangelical, who, who know about Ignatius and, and adopt, their, uh, adopt his practices in their own spirituality. And, you know, I, I feel like Ignatius was, for me, it was one of, it was one of the, the, the spiritual greats who kind of leveled the playing field for us. So it, it, I grew up in a very like blue collar um, world uh, and was a mechanic before I got into publishing. And, you know, Ignatius really appealed to me because I felt like he was talking to me in my blue collar world. And then later on, he was talking to me in, in the white collar world that I, you know, like moved into. And so you can have conversations, you know, at many, many deeper levels, at many, many different levels, because at, at the core of, of Ignatian spirituality is how do you find God in all things, seek God in all things, right? And spirituality is about giving ourselves, is about giving the experience and experiences that we have meaning and, and using Ignatian spirituality to do that has been, I know just for me personally has revolutionized my life. So Gary, you actually found God as a mechanic. I'm not being facetious in that question or trying to be cute. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, Joe, like working on cars, right? And how cars worked, you know? And, and if something's a little out of whack, right? Your car's not gonna work, right? And that really, I started like finding God in like spark plugs because the, uh, you know, because and I started seeing things in metaphors, like in that spark, the spark of life, you know, the big bang, you know, these things that, that not, there's a, there's a mechanism to the world. I don't want to make it sound like it's a cold thing, right? But Ignatian spirituality really opened up for me that, that, that the world that we live in is metaphoric in many, many ways, right? And so a, the spark of a spark plug would make me think about the spark of life. <laughs> Right. That's and crazy. how, um, you know, and how, you know, you would look at tires, right. And you'd be changing tires. If you have a flat tire, you can't move. Right. And we know that when we feel flat spiritually, it's very, very difficult for us to move. So, you know, being able to kind of like look at cars uh, was, 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 was an entry point for me in many ways to Ignatian spirituality, which has become, like I said, it's, it's a cornerstone in my spiritual, in my spiritual life. Not, not just my spiritual life, my life. Well, and to just build on what Gary's saying, I mean, I think Gary, you're sharing how practical the spirituality is. And I think that's one of the things that I love about Ignatian spirituality and why it is so relevant today is because it offers us a way. And I find that it's a spirituality that helps, helps me, helps others that, you know, are, are engaged in this spirituality to to tend to our longings, our restlessness that we feel. There's such a longing for stillness right now and in, in our loud, busy world. And the fact that it brings, it, it offers again, practical tools for stillness, for silence, practical ways to listen and find God's voice in the middle of it all, right? If it's God trying to wake us up to tend to a longing of our heart, um, a restlessness we're feeling, that this spirituality meets us. And then I believe, I know I've heard several people say it's, it's God meeting us where we are in life and offering us a way to go deeper. You know, a, a great example of, of what you all are talking about, I think is the Ignatian exam and that, that idea that, that we should pray uh, once or twice during the day, right in the middle of the day. So it's not, you leave your day, you go to some 
uh, chapel for an hour and a half. No, you right in the middle of the day, you spend 10, 15 minutes. And what do you pray about? Not some lofty idea, but you pray about the concrete moments, the concrete interactions that you just had in the last few hours. So th that's a perfect example, I think, of what you all are talking about, that Ignatian spirituality, it really wants to dig deep into the nitty gritty, into the nitty gritty of our of our lives. And, and just the fact that Ignatius sort of insisted that it not be more than 15 minutes just shows you his insight about how if we're going to bring God into our nitty gritty, uh, we're, we're not going to always do this 90 minute prayer. We're going to have to pray in the, the small moments of our day as well. Yeah, I think that's one of the uh, the uh, things I appreciate most uh, about Ignatian prayer was how practical. Uh, we have such busy lives. That uh, sounds like a book, Becky. Um, and, uh, you know, just to, to have St. Ignatius saying, you know, take 15 minutes. That's all it takes to, to review your day and, and to go back uh, over things and to, to look and see, you know, where was God uh, in, uh, in that day. But uh, let's move on and uh, talk about uh, this. the next question. I'm going to ask Father Mark uh, to, to lead uh, this part of the conversation. Uh, what central themes of Ignatian spirituality did Father Barry introduce you to personally or help you to understand with more clarity? So, Joe, uh, you gave this question to me uh, a while back and and I was having a hard time uh, paring it down to one thing because he's given me so much. But sure. what I ended up with is uh, what I really want to talk about is, I, uh, interestingly, the, the very thing that is a sort of centerpiece of, of the upcoming book that's not yet on the shelves yet by Loyola Press. Uh, and I was so delighted to see that after I sort of put this thought together. But Years ago, I heard uh, Bill Barry actually several times speak about how this, the flow of the spiritual exercises, the, the principle and foundation, first week, second week, third week, fourth week, the flow of the exercises uh, can be likened to a relationship uh, e either, and he, he recommended you look at it as a romantic or a relationship or as a friendship. And, and uh, he just did such a wonderful job being a psychologist among all the other things he, he was. As a psychologist, he could talk about this with authority, but he said that, you know, the principle and foundation, the early part where we pray about creation and why we're created, he says is sort of like the infatuation stage of the mm -hmm. relationship where we sort of fall in love with one another and, and we, we, we're a bit infatuated. We only see the good and, oh, isn't this just a perfect relationship? And then very quickly you move into first week when, when, when you see that, oh no, it's not gonna be this ideal relationship. And, and then the question before us is, will we stay together? Will our relationship endure even though I cannot be as faithful to the relationship as, as I, I even want to be? And then the second week he says, is when in a relationship, you start to work on a project together. So if it's two friends, maybe they'll go in business with one another. If it's a married couple, perhaps the project is raising children. Uh, and he says, you know, in the second week of the exercises, we stand shoulder to shoulder with Jesus working on the project of, of his life, which is reconciliation of the world with God. And then, of course, the ultimate test of a friendship is, will you be there while your friend dies? And, and so you, you, you sit with Jesus through his death and, and you, you, you stand at the foot of the cross as he dies. And then, and then finally, does your love, does your relationship go beyond death? Is, is love in fact stronger than death? And, and what will your relationship look like that's even beyond death? And, and so he presented this whole way, this whole metaphor for the flow of the spiritual exercises years ago in several different ways, including to me, just before he led me on my 30 day retreat as a tertian, the last wow. stage wow. of my formation. And I thought it was just brilliant. And I've never been able to look at the exercises w uh, the same way. Mm -hmm. I've always looked at it. And as novice master myself, uh, that's how I taught the novices. Everyone could relate to that, that wonderful image. So, 
that's that's just one i could say many more but but that's that's probably my favorite uh my favorite theme that that bill barry gave to me in terms of ignatian spirituality it's wonderful for me uh um, the one thing that really, you know, just kind of echoing what you were saying, Father Mark, is just this idea of friendship and being in relationship with God and, and looking at your relationship with God as a friendship. And one of the things that has really stuck out for me for so long is just, you know, friendships and relationships, they shrivel up when we stop sharing. And I never really thought of it that way. But, you know, if I look back on friendships that have, you know, that have fallen, you know, to the wayside or just, you know, just that I'm just not friends with certain people anymore in life i do look back now having read that that yeah we stopped sharing right we stopped communicating with ourselves with with each other and and being vulnerable and it sounds you know it, it, and, and and when father barry talks about intimacy and and just being open like talk to god about feeling frustrated talk to god about um your doubts you know and when we do that with our friends, we know that it just goes to a different level, right? All of a sudden, the sharing happens and, you know, the Holy Spirit kind of like rises, you know, in these communications. But that idea of really being vulnerable, being looking to God as a friend, as a friend who you can trust, being vulnerable and just sharing and just share, right? And, 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 and see what happens. And the more that I've done that in, in my spiritual life, the more I've felt growth. And when I've pulled back and when I've gotten angry, when I don't return God's call or don't text him back, the, uh, you know, I, I feel that I start to shrivel. So in many ways, you know, sharing is a lot like water, right? It, it allows things to grow, yeah. right? It keeps your joints lubricated. It allows you to move. And, and when you don't, right, when you don't share, when you're not watering your relationship, it'll dry up. And so that's something that has just stayed with me. And I think, I probably think about that every day. How am I being a good friend to God? How am I listening to God? Um, you know, how can I listen more when God wants to share with me? And then how can I be a better friend to the people around me by sharing and listening? Gary, when you say that out, you know, we've, I know we've all been probably thinking and pondering about this morning for a while. And the two, there, there's three words that have continued to come to mind when I think of um, his influence of his writings in my life, and it's friendship, trust, and transparency. And he writes a lot about trust and transparency, like what you were just talking about, of how important it is for us to share the real of our life. You know, I keep hearing us talk about the nitty gritty, <laughs> the concrete, like all these really important um, and even insignificant moments of our life with God. And that is how our relationship grows. And I know from my own life, I know from listening to people in direction and on retreats, like we get in trouble when we stop being transparent and we start hiding parts of ourselves. And the more that we can open up and just bring, I always say, name the real of your life, right? Mm -hmm. Bring the real of your life. And, and I feel his, his influence has been giving us, at least giving me more permission to do that, right? To, to bring that, trans to be transparent. Yeah, yeah one, of, one of my favorite books that I've worked, that I worked with Father Barry on was Praying the Truth. Yes. And he really dug into the idea that, you know, you just <laughs> need expecting. to be, you just need to be honest um, with God and you can pray about any, you can talk to God about anything. And, uh, and I, th I think it's one of his more powerful books. I mean, all of his books are wonderful, but um, I really, I felt very um, encouraged when I worked on praying the truth with him. Um, and I, I, one of the things that just comes to me over and over again, and I've worked with Father Barry on several books now, uh, is first of all, he starts with creation and the fact that we are created good and God still sees us as beloved creation. That just comes over and over and over again. When I think we're so used to, especially some forms of Christianity, they, we start with the fall. We start with sin, you know, and, and when you start there, you're just, you're already in trouble. Uh, but he, he always starts with, and it, you know, the Ignatian exercise start with 
creation, you know, the principle and foundation that we are loved, we were created out of love and for love. Uh, and that just, you're so free then to become who you're created to be when you start at that point. And, and uh, Father Barry just reminds you over and over and over again, you are loved, you are loved and you're invited constantly to work with God in doing what's best for this world. So I, I realize I probably named two or three things, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, my I, favorite I, book, Vanita. Just <laughs> I got it right here, praying the truth. I love this book. For me, the um, the question was actually an easy one because uh, I there is no insight. Uh, I think in the from any spiritual writer, this in, has influenced me as much uh, as Bill Barry's insight of looking at a relationship with to God as you would look at a relationship with a friend. And I think I, I found that first in his book God and You which I was given uh, when I was thinking about entering the Jesuits and had no idea there's that beautiful, it's an, an amazing book. And I think I've recommended it to hundreds of people by now. Uh, so the idea is that prayer can be compared to, or relationship to God can be compared fruitfully to a relationship with a friend. And I think what's so helpful about that as someone who prays uh, and who believes, and also as a spiritual director, is that it's a good kind of diagnostic technique. So you say, well, what makes for a good friendship? Well, for example, time. You have to spend time with, with a friend if you want to get to know the person, and you have to spend time with God in prayer. You have to be honest, as a number of people were saying. What happens when you're not honest, right? When you're not honest, um, the, the relationship, as you know, Gary was saying, can kind of shrivel up uh, if you don't spend time. It can also grow cold and distant and formal, right? Oftentimes in direction when someone says, I feel blocked, it's because they're not being honest. The ability to change is very important in any friendship. What kind of friendship would you have if, you know, you were the same, you related to the person the same way when you were five years old as you do as an adult? So all these things can be used as, in a sense, tools to, to look at your relationship with God. And I, I just found that not only mind-blowing, but life-changing. And so, and that is very, as Mark was saying, that is very much along the lines of Ignatius, who said um, that we are invited to speak to God, uh, quote, as one friend speaks to another. And so, so prayer as as the subtitle of that book, uh, God and You, is prayer is a personal relationship. Really, I, I, it, it changed my life, and uh, I'm, still, I'm still unpacking that, uh, that fantastic insight uh, of Bill Barry's. Yeah, and I'm going to keep you on, Father Jim, to, to uh, move into the next question, but it also occurs to me, as uh, each of you have spoken, the, the power that a book can have on a person's life. Um, you know, that uh, St. Ignatius himself, was was changed because he he had two books to read while he was uh, convalescing and and Father Jim you just talked about a a book that uh, that changed your life as you were entering the the Jesuits and so it, it's just a, a something that uh, uh, I think we all need to be aware of is you know how important that that written word is and I'm so thankful that each of you has contributed. Um, so many wonderful gifts through through your books. And uh, so uh, let's lead to the next question, uh, Father Jim, and then the rest of the panel. So uh, talk about a personal story with uh, Father Barry or uh, how Father Barry's work impacted your life, your spirituality, and, and your own work. And I know you could probably take the, the rest of the time, Father Jim, to talk about <laughs> uh, personal stories, but uh, get us started on this uh, part of the conversation. Yeah, sure. I'm laughing because I think with maybe the exception of Mark Thibodeau, but I don't even think in that case, I'm the only one who for whom Father Barry was my religious superior for okay. six years. He was my provincial. And so I knew him in a different wow, capacity. Sure. But I'm going to I'll tell you very briefly, God and you changed my life. Uh, God and you changed my life. I had no idea how to pray. I was I was handed this book as a, as a Jesuit novice or, or shortly before I entered the novitiate. And it just blew my mind. Uh, it, it opened up prayer to me, uh, you know, as Mark was saying, it wasn't just, you know, sort of lofty prayer and thinking about the Trinity, although that's an important part of prayer. And I have told him, I told him, you know, <laughs> dozens of times how much that book meant to me. So, but I'll tell you a funny story about Bill Barry. Uh, so when I was in uh, East Africa uh, for two years working with, uh, with uh, refugees, I came back and for a number of reasons, which I won't go into, uh, the province decided, Bill Barry decided that I needed another year of what's called regency, uh, which is sort of the, the, the middle part of Jesuit training when you work full time in Jesuit ministry. And I was furious. I really was furious about that. And I thought I, I should go on to theology. I'm ready. It's time. And Bill, you know, was a kind of, you know, this is the person who sort of taught me how to pray through his books, you know, was a kind of a, 
conflict, you know, between us. Anyway, so I ended up, uh, you know, out of obedience going to America Media, you know, which is, I, I mean, thanks to that decision, it's sort of where I, I ended up today in my, my ministry. And so years later, um, I would say this is about 10 or 15 years ago, I went up to Bill Barry at a, a province uh, meeting, a province congregation, actually. And, you know, we we're very good friends, you know, by this point. Uh, and I said to him, you know, sort of like very dramatically, um, you know, Bill, I, said, well, I remember we were, we were like, uh, I was having a soda and he was having a drink or something. I said, you know, Bill, all those years ago when we had that big kind of kind of conflict, you know, about going to theology and all that, I said, um, you know, now I recognize that that, you know, you were right. You were right. I wasn't ready. And it was really the right thing to do. And I expected Bill Barry to say, yeah, you know, Jim, in retrospect, I can see that that was the right decision. <laughs> and Bill said, and for any of you who know him, this is typical Bill. Bill said, yeah, I knew I was right back then. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, a, it was a really funny moment. And uh, I'll never forget that. He said, yeah, I knew it was right. You weren't ready. And that's why I delayed you. So that was that was classic Bill Barry. And, you know, part of it was he was, you know, as um, as, as several people were saying, he was honest with you. He was always honest. He was always it was it was gentle. It was it was direct. But that that's a very Bill Barry story. You know, he was honest about my need to to sort of, uh, you know, do another year of Regency. And he was honest to say, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I was right back then, too. Uh, but story. but primarily it, it is that book. It is that book, God in You, which I see as for, for me in, in, in my own life as a Jesuit, as sort of his legacy within me. Yeah, the, uh, uh, his brother Jesuits know <laughs> Bill Barry in a different in a different sort of way than th those who only know him through his books, because in his books, uh, probably thanks to Vanita Wright, he, he comes off very gently. <laughs> but he's, not, he, he's not always the most gentle guy, uh, uh, especially with his brother Jesuits. But I really loved him for that. He was this kind of crusty old New England guy who, who uh, you know, I come from the South. It's all about Southern charm. And so they, he, he had a charm, but it wasn't a, the Southern charm. It was this kind of crusty New Englander charm that that actually made me really love him all the more. I just this is a just almost scandalous story. But I, I, uh, I he directed him in the 30 day retreat and he was just the most wonderful director. But mm. I had this one terrible day where I just took a bad turn. Uh, I made a bad decision in my own prayer and I took a bad turn in the and the whole day was just just a ruin and 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 I was discouraged and downtrodden. And I went in his office. I said, Bill, I, I just really uh, screwed up. I took this wrong turn and I, I, I decided to do this. And I was expecting him to be nice and consoling and such. And, uh, and he said, you dummy. <laughs> and then we both just burst out laughing. But the reason why he did it, why he said you dummy is because he and I were such close friends by then. And because he knew it would it would knock me out of my own self-loathing and so, like he knew that, that it would be uh, the right way to to knock me out of my own little my own little spirals that I was going in. And we both just had a great laugh about it and it comforted me and I could go on, you know, but <laughs> but it, just as Jim said, those of us who knew him on a personal level, you know, he was a he was kind of a, a Jesuit's Jesuit. He was going to. He was gonna. Uh, he wasn't gonna play play gentle. We, you know, with Jesuits, uh, uh, with our brother Jesuits, we 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 don't always play touch. Sometimes we play tackle, and, and 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 I needed him. I needed him to do that for me. Sometimes he could just knock me out of my own little my own little spirals because of that. Well, one brief thing, just to quickly follow up, uh, the joke in the New England province was that as he got older and and warmer uh, and more gentle, he became more like his books. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome but this makes me like him even more hearing y'all tell me stories because it's even his his themes that we're talking about to hear the trust and transparency showing up in his real life just makes me respect him even more <laughs> the uh i didn't i never met him face to face but i knew him at the end of his life um i'd come over to Loyola Press about 18 months ago, a little bit more than that. And uh, he reached out to me and we'd had a conversation. And look, 
God in You was, was a life changer for me. And it was like my first Ignatian retreat. I had read it before someone gave it to me to read and I went into my Ignatian retreat. And so many of the themes that we were talking about that first time uh, really helped me, just really helped me, you know, get a center, get centered. Um, and so I knew him through his books. And again, he comes across as a really nice guy. And when I got on the phone with him, he was cantankerous. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and uh, and I'm a, I think I'm a pretty nice guy. And I'm like, why is this guy giving me such a hard time? But he was really kind of like busting my chops on the phone uh, about the new book, which, um, which uh, Vanita did such a wonderful job on. Um, you know, those authors, book. authors are yeah. such picky and, people. Uh, but, it, but it really was a bit of a disconnect in that, you know, I'd heard this voice in his books and then he was kind of busting my chops and, and giving me a hard time uh, about a few things. And the, uh, and I just remembered like having a conversation with Benita. I'm like, all right, so this guy doesn't trust me at all. So <laughs> I'm turning this over to you. <laughs> and we still communicated uh, back and forth. And we actually, he actually softened up a little bit to me. And then, uh, and then we were in constant communication for, for months. And then, and then I didn't hear from him. And I, oh, that was the thing too. When I came over, you know, he reached out to me about a new book and he's like, you know what, this is probably my last book. This is, this is going to be it. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm 90 years old and uh, it's, this is it. And I remember going back to the board and they're saying, yeah, he's been dying for like the last 20 years. Every book is his last book. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he'll still, he'll still be putting out books five years from now, but it did turn out to be his last book. And then uh, we had been in constant communication. And then a week went by where I didn't hear from him and, and I went, well, that's a little, that's a little odd. And, and he had gotten sick, but, uh, oh. but I really, as, as he warmed up to me and I warmed up to him, uh, I just feel really blessed that I got to know him because he was such a, absolutely such a, you know, an inspiration to me. And, and, um, and I've worked with a lot of authors over the years and you get to see their warts and you get to see their mm -hmm. insecurities, you get to see them be mean, you get to see them be gracious to uh, in ways that, you know, readers don't. So I just feel very blessed that I got, you know, sure. the last eight months before he passed that I got to know him a little. Well, I want to dispel any rumors about um, my putting the gentleness into his books. <laughs> I just want to put that to rest right now uh, because his books, have, you know, I've edited several now and uh, the graciousness always came through. And what amazed me is, you know, I've been editing books for more than 30 years now and I'm rather jaded. I mean, I lose interest quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I've just, I've been working with words for so long that some days it's just not as interesting as other days, but he would always pull me in. Yeah. Now he, and he wrote in such a simple way. And, and yet I know this, this is a really educated person. And this is someone who has expertise in more than one area. And yet he's able to communicate these wonderful truths in a way that's just inviting to the reader. And he would pull me in too, this, this jaded editor who's really, you know, some days you're just tired of reading about Jesus. I have to say, you know, you just are. You get tired of it. Because that's is it, all, is you there know, Jesus fatigue? There you're is. Tired. Yeah, when it, when it comes to editing and, it, you know, uh, I think we all experience that. Yeah. I'm the honest one who says that I actually go through it. But, uh, but yeah, but he would pull me in every time. The, his, his, uh, his writing just invited me and I would be overwhelmed every time at some point in the book I'd be crying and I so you know I think that's the power of a spirit-filled life yeah. um, it, you you don't you know you can write to make yourself look good you can you can write to um, to argue a point but the kind of the kind of thing that came across in Bill's writing I think that requires the Holy Spirit I just I, I don't think you do that kind of writing unless there's something really going on there um, to to just, you know, to write on these same thing, themes year after year. And yet every book is its own thing. And every uh, every one of them uh, really invites people in, in a very loving, gracious way. And yeah. I just regret I never got I never got to meet him. I was actually going to go visit him. Hmm. And, and then and he got sick this was a few years ago yeah and i think he just i think didn't he break break a bone or something yeah and yeah. and i think he really wasn't comfortable with people visiting him you know sure. when he was and i never got to meet him in person although i talked with him on the phone but um 
I, I, I experienced him as a non-Jesuit. I experienced him as, as, you know, always very gracious and gentle, although, you know, being truthful about, you know, questions about what we were doing with the book and all of that. Yeah. Um, Becky, I'm going to ask you to sort of transition uh, from the one question to the next. You're going to lead the next part, but if you have something you also want to share uh, from the last one, but uh, uh, what do you think Father Barry's legacy is and, and how can people benefit from his writings? Yeah, that what well, it'll my answer to the last one will flow right into this Good. question, Joe. Because when I think of when I was introduced to, I've never met him. I should say that um, only only seen him speak from afar and and reading his books. But his books took what was like a smoldering ember of longing to get to know God and really set it on fire. And it was his book, A Friendship Like No Other, that was significantly changed my life. Kind of like several people have talked about his um, God in You, which is an amazing book too. But knowing that I could actually have a friendship with Jesus, right? That it was someone, like he wasn't so far off, but it was someone that could be personal and close to. I mean, it just, it wet my appetite. And ultimately his writings is what led me to finally make the exercises. Cause I kept thinking, I want, I want what this man has. And then as I started doing the exercises and I got to the first week and, you know, you start praying with that question, what ought I do for Christ? <laughs> writing came up and I remember going, God, you're crazy. Like I am not a writer and um, I see Joe Durapo is on our call. And yes. at the time I reached out, um, well, I had talked to Tom McGrath and at Loyola Press and he introduced me to Joe. And the first proposal I sent to Joe, um, which he said no to, by the way, was uh, <laughs> in a very loving way. You kind of like Father Jim, you got your, your not yet. I got a not yet. But it was, I proposed to be, I was like, I want to be in this Ignatian world. And Joe and I kind of had these rounds and I kept thinking, no, I want to, um, this is where God is calling me to be, right? Sharing how as a woman, um, a young woman that was married and had kids was leaning on the practicality of this spirituality. And so his, when I think of how others can also benefit, number one, the friendship piece, this other part where he talks about so much of our relationship with God is just growing an awareness of how much God has always been with us, right? It's, it's just growing um, into a more conscious relationship, right? And so understanding that has helped me really believe that I'm not alone. And so I would encourage people to, to read his writings. And in the other piece, I always love how he talks about the concrete, like God is in the concrete reality of our life, not far off and some pedestal, you know, or up in some clouds or whatever, but in our life, in the day to day, and that we too, part of this concreteness is how we're called to bring our, our relationship with God and respond to it in our life so that we have a, a, our response to God's love, which is so key to his writing is to bring that love out into the world in a concrete, in a very unique and concrete way. And so um, I could say more, Joe, I'm going to stop <laughs> so I can let other people respond. I know it's hard. There's well, so much that each of you wants to say. Well, Becky, I, I'm, I'm happy to say uh, thanks for bringing up Joe Doropos, uh, who was instrumental in getting Bill's books to Loyola. I'm happy to be the guy who introduced Bill Barry to, to Joe or maybe yeah. vice versa. And I'm very proud of that. I think uh, I agree with you. I, you know, I think his legacy is also this is not a word used often for in spiritual circles, but uh, it makes the spiritual life easy for people. Uh, yeah. You know, Vanita was talking about his, his style is so, which I've, I've tried to, um, you know, sort of learn from as well. It's very simple. It's very simple. It's very clear. And, um, you know, I think he, he used stories more and more as his books uh, kind of went on. Very simple, very clear. And it makes you feel, you know, as Becky, I felt the same way. I can do this. Right. Yes. I mean, you read someone like and nothing against them. You know, they're they're saints. You read, you know, St. John of the Cross or yeah. St. Teresa of Avalon. Some of it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Look, I have no idea what you're talking about. What does that mean? When you read Bill Barry, you say, I can do this. Here's a guy kind of laying it out in simple terms. And I think that's a really important legacy for people because it does make 
uh, you know, use the word, I think, inviting. It does make it inviting and accessible. And I always think, look, this is the way Jesus spoke to people. Yeah. I mean, Jesus's parables were, you know, the great quote from C.H. Dodd uh, from nature and everyday life. You know, he doesn't talk about, I mean, at some point, you know, we're in the middle of John. He talks about, you know, the Trinity and, you know, yeah. I'm in the father and the father's yeah. in me. But most of the time it's, it's weeds and wheat and birds and yeah. seeds. And, and it, it, he meets people where they are. And I think, I think a lot of his legacy is strangely enough, his style his style of writing, which, which invites people into that, that world, uh, that world of friendship with Jesus. Yeah. Father Jim, as you're saying that I'm chuckling, thinking his, he made it so real. I mean, when I, I still can't believe it, but I made the exercises with a two-year-old and a four week old <laughs> is when I started. I mean, but that is what, as a, you're saying that it's making my heart leap going, yeah, he made me believe I could do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's amazing. Which is kind of amazing. But I mean, that book, I mean, like I said, that friendship like no other was a game changer mm. when I thought, okay, I'm good. And guess what? I did it and, and I have done it ever since. And I'm so glad he showed us that it was possible, you know? Exactly. I, I think part of his legacy is the fact that, uh, you know, you can hand his books to anybody. And that, uh, to me, it, it's kind of an ecumenical legacy and that you know i could hand this book to friends of mine who are baptists or you know come out of a completely different world well not completely but you know what i mean you you just uh spiritual seekers all have a lot in common but um because he writes the way he does you don't feel like you have to know the catholic insider language to get what he's talking about uh you don't have to feel that you must do certain religious practices for everything to work right. And um, because he's really concentrating on prayer between you and the God who loves you. And so I see his books as quite, um, I've used the word welcoming and inviting several times, but um, I do think that they really can transcend boundaries in the, in the world of spirituality and, and just about anyone who is seeking um, could benefit from them. Yeah, I would, I would say we've already said this many times, but the legacy is that uh, what Ignatius would say, allowing the creator to deal directly with the creature. It, that was just so important for him. And, and uh, he, he, he would take it to the very end, that, 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 that belief that the creator wants to deal directly with the creature. And I think those of you who are trained spiritual directors, I think you'll agree with me that even we who are trained, sometimes we find ourselves talking about God, but not actually talking to God. And, and even when I'm directing a directee, sometimes I, I, I don't send them back to God. I want to have this, this lovely conversation about God. But uh, in my own personal experience with him, it, like, for example, in the 30-day retreat where he led me in, he just would not he would never step into the role of savior. Even if, mm. if I was struggling in a part in, in the 30 day retreat, I see Jim Martin nodding. I think he knows this is true. Even if I was struggling, he, he would just insist that there's only one savior. So he would kick me out of his office and go, go take that problem to God. And, mm. and I'll be here when you, when you get back, you know, and he, he just knew, he knew that the Lord would come to our rescue and, and that trust, that faith that he had, uh, is something that I desire, something I pray for myself. Yeah, it wasn't about, for him, it wasn't about advice. It wasn't giving advice. Yeah. And I, I uh, had, uh, very quickly, I had uh, two uh, directees of mine who were young Jesuits do a retreat a couple of years ago with Bill Barry. And I said, well, you're in good hands. And uh, when they came back, I said, well, how was it? And they said it was surprising because he actually, he talked to us very little. Yeah. He, he mm-hmm. was all about going back to God and, you know, he'd refined it by the end of his life. And it wasn't about giving advice or showing you how much he knew it was let's talk about your prayer and then go back so yeah he really did he himself trusted yeah the um you know for me well the heart of christianity is to love god and love your neighbor as yourself and like everything else it's all footnotes right in in catholic publishing we publish footnotes we publish footnotes for that core idea Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. That's your purpose. But it can be really difficult to like love God and it can be really difficult to love your neighbor. And what I see is Bill Barry's you know, legacy is that he gives us a really practical way to help us do that. Um, because we can say it, we can know it, 
but until we really experience it, uh, we're not, we're just, we're not there. And what I always loved about Bill's books was that it helped me to, it helped me to trust, you know, the people around me, you know, I kind of grew up like hard scrabble life, kind of had trust issues, is tough, right? Still have them. Uh, but Bill is like, no, oh, man, in order for you to grow, you got to trust, right? And, and, and what Becky was saying before and what Bill says in his books about being transparent. Yeah, I mean, it's all really, really important. So I think his legacy is that he really gives a practical, simple way to help us, a simple, practical footnote to, uh, to really help us, you know, understand and live, not just understand, but actually live and experience the golden rule to love God, love your neighbor as yourself. So well put, well. Gary. And, and I'm going to ask you to stay on to, to lead the next part of our, the last part of our conversation. I do have to insert a comment that when uh, I think it was Father Mark was talking about the difference between talking about God and talking to God. That was a lesson I learned as a catechist. And, and I think I try to teach to other catechists that we often invite Jesus into the room and we make him sit in the corner while we <laughs> talk about him for the whole time. And catechists need to really learn how to take time during a catechetical session to invite their participants to talk uh, to God uh, through prayer and guided reflection. And so um, St. Ignatius had his uh, great in inspiration and influence on catechesis. So, but that's another uh, uh, broadcast that we can do at some point. But Gary, um, let's transition to talk about this Ignatian Jubilee and get us started talking about how can the works of Father Barry shed light on this Ignatian year? Sure. The, you know, the one thing I love about our Catholic faith is every day is a holiday. We party all the time. And so, I mean, we have solemnities, we got big holidays, we have saints days. Every day, if you really follow the calendar, I mean, you could you could get to know so many different saints, uh, so many different saints, so many different experiences of the church, of, of the people who have come before us. And so this year we got a Jubilee year. It's happening at the same time as the year of St. Joseph. And coming back to this whole concept of, of friendship, I mean, this is a year where we can, we can get to know that the Churchill is saying, and, and the Jesuits are saying, here's an opportunity to get to know somebody you might not know before, or may not know that well. And so uh, you know, this year of the Jubilee, you know, like taking Father Barry's like books, that core idea of his about befriending God is also really an opportunity for us to befriend Ignatius, right? And just as we have certain, certain way that we talk to our parents and maybe certain things that we share with our parents, um, sometimes we don't necessarily feel comfortable in our earthly existence about sharing certain things um, with parents or, or family members, but maybe you want to tell a friend, right? So this year, I think, really gives us an opportunity to become friends with Ignatius, to, to share with him um, our concerns, our problems, our joys, and, and to get to know him a little bit more as we're getting to know St. Joseph as well, and, and to allow that seed the opportunity to grow and again watering you know that relationship being able to read father barry's books as as a, a um kind of a map as as not necessarily a how-to book but really as a way of illuminating uh who saint ignatius is in a very very simple way and you know the spiritual exercises is great but it's kind of dry and, and if you're going through it you could stop pretty quickly. So I think it's really people who, have, who want to get to know Ignatius more, who haven't done the spiritual exercises, just start with any Bill Barry book or start, you know, with the, the newest one to plug uh, our, our, our books here at Loyola. The, um, and, and to do that, because there really is a great friendship, I think, this year that we can develop with St. Ignatius. And, and I think the Jubilee is a great opportunity to do that. We have about five or six minutes left, so I'll ask my panelists to keep it brief, but let's continue talking about how Father Barry can shed light on the Jubilee. Well, yeah. I'm just going to say it in one or two sentences, and that uh, his books encapsulate what Ignatius was trying to teach all along, and that God longs for our friendship and for us to participate with God in the world. 
Yeah, and, and, I can... and whether it's Father Barry or Ignatius, I mean, they are they are always pointing to Jesus, right? So even at my hope is this Ignatian Jubilee year. I mean, obviously I'm not a Jesuit, but <laughs> my hope is that it yes, we get to know Ignatius, but what did Ignate what was Ignatius about? He wanted us to know, love, and follow Christ. And so I hope that this year. And, it, and I was looking at all the titles of other Bill Berry's books on my desk in front of me. Everyone is about God, right? Deepening friendship with God, letting God come close, praying the truth. Why? So we grow our friendship, right? So I think, and I just think the world, gosh, y'all, how awesome would the world be if people understood what he wrote about, right? The depth of God's love and how we're called to respond to that love. Yeah. Well, to take off from what Becky just said, uh, she said she's not a Jesuit. And, you know, it's, I think it's so wonderful that uh, it's not called the Jesuit Jubilee or the Jesuit year. It's called yeah. the Ignatian year because, you know, she was saying the, the riches of Ignatian spirituality are for everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Ignatius meant them for everyone. And so I think that, uh, you know, as Anita, as Vanita was saying earlier, that, that his books you can give to anybody. And so anyone um, who's a believer and who sincerely desires a relationship with God uh, can use these books and can celebrate uh, in their own way uh, the Ignatian year. And that it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's providential that uh, his book's coming out and uh, it's providential we're having this, uh, this meeting today. Yeah, you know, Gary was saying that, you know, for Catholicism, it's every day's a, every day's a party. And uh, th that's another thing we, we haven't said enough, I think, about Bill Barry is that he was just a really delightful, fun guy. And, and I, I think part of what he meant when he said that we can be friends with Christ is that, and, and I'm, I'm certain he said this to me a thousand times, just relax, just relax. You, you're, you're sitting in a room with a friend. And so relax and enjoy it. Uh, and, and how much do we need to hear that when, when we bring this sort of, uh, this sort of somber, uh, wet blanket spirit to our own prayer life and our own spirituality? He would say, no, you, you're sitting with your best friend. So please relax and enjoy yourself. Uh, and I, how much more do we need that all the more, you know? Absolutely. And I, I can't thank you enough, uh, all of my, my panelists. Um, uh, I could listen to you all day. Um, hopefully we can do this again. Maybe we'll have some Ignatius conversations uh, throughout this Ignatian year and invite you back. But I can't thank you enough for the time uh, you took to contribute to this um, uh, roundtable. Thank you for your contributions of books. I have read uh, each uh, books by each of you almost all of the books that each of you have, have written. Father Jim's written so many, I got one or two I need to catch up on there, but I, I've read the rest of you and uh, just such a gift uh, to the world. And I, I thank you for that. And I, I thank all the people who came to join us today. Um, and speaking of books, these books can change lives. And I invite you to visit uh, the store uh, at Loyola Press, so store.loyolapress.com. Uh, and we have some, um, some uh, sales on some of these uh, best-selling books by Father Bill Berry. And uh, it just may be the way that God is, is hoping to change your life because books can indeed uh, change our lives. And so once again, I, I thank you to, to Becky and Vanita and to Mark and to, to Jim and to Gary for being panelists. And I thought it would be most appropriate if we closed uh, by praying the prayer of St. Ignatius the Sushi Pei. Take Lord and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding and my entire will, all I have and call my own. You have given all to me, to you Lord I return it. Everything is yours, do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace, that is enough for me. May we continue to do all things for the greater glory of God. Thank you all and God bless. Thank Amen. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. God bless Thank everybody. You too. <laughs>
Thank you, panelists, especially. God bless you all. It was a joy working with you. You're welcome. This was delightful. Thank you. I know how fun. It was and a thanks, lot you of know, fun. And, and, and I, I know was already I, thinking what Joe said. We should do this again. And you know, <laughs> I, I know, to. I know we're finished, but I also want to say on behalf of the Jesuits, thanks to Loyola for yeah. all their hard work and for bringing Bill Barry's voice to so many people in those beautiful books in such a beautiful format. And I think that's a I think part of the reason that it's so accessible is just the format of the books and how 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 inviting they look. So thanks to Loyola. Thank you, Father Jim. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Our you. pleasure. It's an honor for us to do that. Amen. God bless. We'll everybody. be in touch with you folks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.